Rebecca, thank you for agreeing to share insights with us today. There's been a lot of discussion about female founders in Australia and the lack of female founders. You're obviously an example of a successful entrepreneur who happens to be female. You've also got a great reputation for raising investment capital for your business, formerly Posse and now called Hey You. Can you share a few insights about that process? Was it a skill that came naturally to you when you first started? I wouldn't say it came naturally to me. I think that the, the process of asking people for money was very difficult, but um, I think the process of pitching something did come naturally to me. My background was music, so I'd spend a lot of time, I guess, in sales effectively, where I'd been promoting like an artist and talking about how great it was. So I was used to that part of the process. But um, yeah, I found the the part at the end of the pitch, which was, okay, now I want you to give me $50,000. That was the part that I found really confronting. Did you feel that as a woman, it was harder to ask for the money? Just personally, I did find it hard. I think I was always very, like, I'm quite tenacious by nature. So I would, like I started pitching. I remember my first pitch was really bad. Um, and the person said no, but he did say, oh, you should go and see these other people that I know. And so I went and saw them. They all said no, and they all said, most of them said, you should go and see these other people. And so I just was very tenacious, and I just kept at it and at it and at it. And every time I pitched, I would work out, well, this worked and this didn't work, and then I would go home and improve my presentation. And after I pitched it probably eight or 900 times over the course of a year and a half, it got to a point where it was actually pretty good. And the strategy was really good, and then I started getting a few yeses, and then it snowballed. But um, there was a lot of no's before I started getting yeses. And who were some of your first yeses? So I spoke at three different events. One was Tech 23, one was Sydney Angels, and the other was Innovation Bay. And I was able to get a few investors from each of those different groups. And so, and a couple of them were quite high profile as well. So there was Robbie Cook, who was the CEO of What If at the time, there was someone who was very senior at 9MSN. Uh, Lars Rasmussen, who I met at Tech23, who's the founder of Google Maps, they all became investors and then a lot of people followed what they did. So I think it's important to, you know, it really helped me anyway to get to speak at those events and then to get a few high profile people or people that, that others respected to invest and then others followed. Rebecca, what advice would you give to young women who are starting out on their founder journey? Yeah, I think be confident probably the big piece of advice I would give and that's the difference. Lots of, lots of young entrepreneurs come and see me for advice. Now I try and you know, do whatever I can to help because a lot of people helped me and there was, it was the other week and I had coffee with them back to back and there was one guy and there was one girl and the guy had a business with something to do with when you travel locals showing you around and he really hadn't even gotten started. He'd got some designs and he'd organized some you know, cool people in different places to who had agreed to be hosts, but he hadn't actually built the product and he didn't have any customers. But the way he sold it to me, I, I walked in and he had this presentation, he was very confident, he was gonna raise money, he said the company was worth $5 million, which I thought was a lot, but he, he hadn't even started, really. And then I met with this woman next, and she had a company where, where she was connecting workers in a particular industry with, it was a shift working business, and she, 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 was, she didn't have a presentation prepared. She was very apologetic. She said really it was all about her co-founders. Um, one did the technology and she couldn't survive without him and her husband knew the industry. Uh, she was obviously driving the thing. She said, oh, we've only had 500 paying customers. And I was like, you've had 500 paying customers? You know, that's huge. But she just thought that she needed all this help. So she was almost kind of um, trying to make me feel a little bit sorry for her and using that as a way to connect. Whereas, um, if I, which you know, I did like this person, I did want to help her, but if I was going to invest my money, I would have backed the first guy because he was just a lot more believable. Confidence is not something that you just find on the ground. I think it's something you've really had to work on. When I started out fundraising, I was in the mindset of, I've got this idea, it's a good idea, please help me, I need some money. And then once I really worked on my confidence levels, I go into that meeting believing that this is an amazing business and you would be seriously lucky to be a part of this business. So, you know, you need to sell me as to why I should take investment from you as opposed to somebody else. And I think you have to be that confident, really, for, for people to believe that 
this business is going to be successful. What was the tipping point for you in developing that confidence? All the way back in high school, having ideas for internet companies and writing them down and, and thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was an app that did this or a, um, or a website that did this? And lots of the times, they were, I would see them years later and they'd go on to become hugely successful ideas and I'd think, oh, I should have done that. But I never thought that I could because I don't know how to write code. Like, I don't look like Mark Zuckerberg. I don't live in San Francisco. So I thought, um, yeah, I just didn't think it was for me. And then I remember seeing an interview with Naomi Simpson on television um, and she was talking about Red Balloon. And it, there was like a light bulb moment for me when I thought, wow, if she looks kind of like me and if she could do that, maybe I could do that. And that was really what started me on the journey of thinking seriously, okay, this is the industry I've always wanted to be in. Like, there's nothing, there's no reason why I couldn't do it, so I should give it a shot. Is access to capital a significant barrier for women? No more of a barrier for women than it is for men. It's a barrier for everyone. But I think if you've got, definitely in Australia, if you've got a good idea and you've got a good strategy and you're believable as a leader, I think you can raise capital. There's no shortage of capital out there for good ideas and for good entrepreneurs. What was the best piece of advice you were given? You have to own the room. He's like, if you don't own the room, you'll never get anywhere. He said, even if you don't know what you're talking about, it doesn't even matter. You have to own the room every single meeting. How do you own a room? I was in a meeting with 12 people, all men again, and the meeting started, and again I was on the back foot, and I remember asking the person at the head of the table to move and saying, can I have your seat? Do you mind if we switch seats? And he was like, no, fine. And then I just took over and I ran a presentation and I, I ran that room. And from that point onwards, every meeting I've ever done, I've, I've owned it. And it doesn't matter if, if, if I make a mistake or if I sound, you know, or if people don't like what I say or offend someone, it doesn't even matter. It's much more important just to, to own it. And after, it is confronting at the beginning, but after a while you get used to it and then it becomes much more natural. In terms of owning the meeting, I think it is important to speak early. You don't have to be the first to speak. You don't have to, I mean, often there is a preamble about sport or whatever else that you know, I can't participate in, and that's fine. That's just the way that it is. But when you start talking about the business, business, you, you, you should not ever go into a meeting without a clear idea of what you want to get out of it. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. So every time I go into a meeting, I've thought about, okay, what am I going to spend this hour achieving? And there's a point in the meeting, and it has to be fairly early on, otherwise it gets off track and it's much harder to come in later, where you establish, this is my agenda for this meeting, and uh, you know, what needs to happen to have this agenda succeed. You know, for women who are out there and they're looking to pitch for investment, I would say, first of all, my main piece, first piece of advice is just to get started. So create something. It doesn't matter if it's not very good. And then pitch it to somebody. So find a friend of, you know, friend of friends, friends of parents, whatever, and go and pitch it to them and then get more introductions and pitch it and pitch it and pitch it over and over again. Every day come home and improve that, that presentation until it gets, you, know, you get really confident that it's right. The next thing I would say is just know your stuff inside out. So know um, what are, how much money are you likely to make in year one, two, and three? How, where's your revenue going to come from? Um, any questions about uh, you know, other businesses that are similar, competitors? Know your market. So just really research whatever it is that you're doing so that when you get asked tough questions, which you will, you have really good answers for them because there's nothing that you know, throws you more in a presentation than someone asking you something that you should know and you don't know the answer. So yeah, um, practice, practice, practice. Know your stuff inside out. And I'll say the third thing is particularly early stage capital, like with Sydney Angels, it's important to be passionate because these people invest in people that they like and that they want to see succeed and they you know they want to develop a relationship with so getting you know when you get investors involved in your business at that very early stage it is like a it's like a marriage and you know you've got to <laughs> they've got to want to marry you so i think you've got to be passionate believe in your believe in your product believe in your business and be someone who who they would want to see succeed and develop a relationship with and is there any other advice that you'd like to share for young women starting out their entrepreneurial journey? The chances of somebody 
dropping everything they're doing right now to run and do my idea. It's just so small versus all of the support and help that I got through sharing my idea with people who could contribute in some way to the strategy or introducing me to somebody else or whatever. So yeah, of course there's a risk in sharing your idea, but I think you do a cost benefit analysis, then there's a risk, but the benefit of sharing and getting the feedback that you need and the introductions that you need is much greater than, than, than holding it kind of to yourself.